We're back in Prince Edward Island, where we're going to be spending the next week exploring the island during the fall. But to kick things off, we're going to be spending a couple of nights in a lighthouse while we explore Western PEI. We're Matt and Carla, a Canadian couple with two totally different backgrounds, sharing our experience and advice about traveling in Canada. After almost a decade of world travel, we decided to focus on our home country of Canada and see how deep we could go. This started with a 150 day road trip from coast to coast to coast, showcasing some of the best things to do in each province and territory. We thought we'd see it all on that road trip, but we barely scratched the surface. So follow along as we continue to explore the second largest country on earth. We just arrived in Prince Edward Island, but rather than fly into the capital city of Charlottetown, we decided to actually fly into New Brunswick so that we could drive across Confederation Bridge, which is the longest bridge in Canada at 12.9 kilometers in length. It's really cool to see and it's really cool to drive over. And now we just arrived where we're going to be staying, the West Point Lighthouse Museum. This lighthouse was actually built in 1875 and is the tallest lighthouse in the province, and we're going to be staying right in the tower. This is our first time staying in a lighthouse and I'm so excited to see what this room looks like. I love the vintage look of the room. But of course, the best part are the views of the ocean. So this is the tower room and it's actually the most popular place to stay here as it's the only room in the tower. I actually thought they put this here specifically for tourists right now, but we actually just learned that back in the 19th century, this was the room that would have been used by visitors who docked at West Point Harbor, and it would have had all their best furniture and bedding. Our room is actually on the second floor of the museum, hence the sign that says if the door is closed, it's occupied. But since we haven't toured the place yet, we're gonna start on the first floor. During the 90 years, well, a little bit more than 90 years that this place actually had lightkeepers, there was only two. And the first one was William McDonald, who was the lightkeeper from 1875 to 1925. So 50 years he ran this place. And it seems like a long time, but we've learned that this was actually a pretty high paying job at the time, about $600 a year. I'm not sure what that amounts to now, but it was also a really fun and respected job because you got to have a lot of parties. So this is actually, the social room where they would have had people over, whether they were docking at the port or whatnot. And this is where they would have had, you know, nice furniture and stuff to show off, or they might have even uh, nursed someone back to health. After a 40 minute drive, we just arrived to Lennox Island First Nation, where we're going to be having a bannock and clams in the sand experience. It's a little bit windy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now that the bannock mix is ready, Sarah's making a hole in the fire. We're gonna be putting basically a layer of flour, then putting the mixture on top, another layer of flour, and then sand, and letting it cook in the sand for about an hour. The reason why we're doing a second batch of bannock is we're gonna do bannock on a stick. So the first one is being made under the fire. This one we're gonna roast over the fire, kind of like a marshmallow. A little bit windy or what? <laughs> <laughs> It takes a different kind of precision out here. I must say I'm not the best in the kitchen. Well, I'm gonna 
check now to see if they're ready. Just have to see if there's basically dough still. In the stick, you got to check if there's dough. No, it looks pretty in good. The stick. It looks good? Yeah. This one's good. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, our bannock turned out pretty good, fully cooked. And I think this is the first time I'm trying an oyster so yeah. like this. Oh my God. Okay, here it goes. Oh, I don't know if they're my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> the texture, a little bit jelly still. <laughs> All right. Well, I do like seafood, but this is a more extreme side of seafood. I don't mind it. So our bannock is actually cooked. It's just a little bit uncooked at the bottom, but it's okay. We're just gonna cut that piece off. Better on the stick or in the fire? I want to put it like this, very similar. But like this, it, it's warmer. It's literally just out of the oven. Well, that was a really interesting experience. We've tried bannock a number of times, but never the traditional way being cooked underneath a fire. So if you want to try it for yourself and learn the recipe, make sure you book a tour here at the Mi'kmaq Cultural Center in Lenox Island. Just book it about 24 hours in advance or more to ensure you have a spot. PEI is known for its red sand, its lighthouses, and its seafood, but it's also known for its potatoes. It's actually the primary crop here in the province, and it's the largest potato producing province in Canada, producing a quarter of all the potatoes in this entire country. So we're here at the Canadian Potato Museum to learn all about it. After learning about the farming procedure and machinery of potatoes, we're now learning that potatoes are actually native to South America. So in Peru, there's over 3,500 different kinds of potatoes, whereas in Canada, 80% of the harvested potatoes come only from six different varieties. <laughs> We're actually in the, a different part of the museum right now where they've put little coffins for the potatoes to show you the different diseases that have killed them over the years. No one wants a bad potato, but everyone wants a perfect potato, which is basically resistant to diseases and insects, has a high yield, matures early, and tastes good. According to the Guinness Book of Records, a guy way back in 1795 had dug up a potato that was more than eight kilos and was about this size. <laughs> the Potato Museum sounds like a funny place to go, but it's actually really interesting. We learned so much about potatoes. One thing I didn't know was how healthy they are. They're basically one of the most complete protein sources when it comes to plant foods. And combined with milk, basically can deliver everything you need to survive. We were hoping to eat some potatoes in their restaurant, but unfortunately it's closed, so we picked up some potato fudge. Well, I'm gonna do the owners of the first bite. It's pretty good. Sweet, <laughs> very sweet, but good. It is very good and very sweet, so don't be confused. Yes, potatoes are healthy, but this is not. <laughs> we're by the sea we like to eat seafood as much as we can because it should be very fresh and I ordered something that I've never tried before which is lobster roll which is basically blended lobster on a toasted bun and on the side we ordered some chowder And I love chowder. Pretty much any time I get the chance, I order seafood or clam chowder.
Well, we're back on the beach again for yet another sunset. It's so great to be back in Atlantic Canada and a really unique experience to stay in a lighthouse for our very first time. It's also our first time exploring the western side of PEI, but we're going to be exploring a lot more of Prince Edward Island as well as other provinces in Atlantic Canada. So make sure you stay tuned for those videos as well. But if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our adventures across Canada. And for more information and travel guides, visit our website at mozucanada.com. Ah, freaking hot. <laughs> mm. That one had sand in it. No, not no. for you. <laughs> not for me. I need to have some kind of dressing. Something, something on it. 